Gaming history is filled with moments that have shocked us, wowed us, inspired us. Moments that made us grieve, made us smile and breathe sighs of relief. Moments that have solidified gaming as an important part of our lives and culture. That's why we love video game music so much, not just because we associate it with these moments, but because music is what makes these moments as powerful as they are. One of my favorite moments from all of gaming is the ending to Shovel Knight. If you haven't played Shovel Knight yet, you really owe it to yourself to stop watching this right now and go play it without having the ending spoiled, but we both know you're not going to do that, so... In the game, our hero, Shovel Knight, abandons his adventuring lifestyle after the tragic loss of his partner, Shield Knight. After hearing of the evil Enchantress and her Order of No Quarter who have taken over the land, Shovel Knight comes out of his grief-induced hermithood to fight his way up the Tower of Fate and defeat the Enchantress. At the end of the game, we discover the Enchantress is actually Shield Knight herself, possessed by the evil amulet the partners had found when exploring the Tower of Fate before the events of the game. The plot riffs off of classic NES-era Save the Princess type stories, but it carries much more emotional weight than you'd expect from something like that. We really care about Shield Knight, and we feel Shovel Knight's pain and loss throughout the game. This sort of emotional significance wouldn't be possible without the absolutely incredible soundtrack, written by Jake Kaufman, and today I want to talk about how his Shield Knight theme is used to give added layers of emotional depth to the narrative of Shovel Knight. Throughout the game, Shovel Knight is haunted by nightmares. Visions of Shield Knight falling to the ground while Shovel Knight attempts to catch her, only to wake up before he can save her. These poignant moments are underscored by Kaufman's main interpretation of the Shield Knight theme, titled Requiem of Shield Knight. Let's take a look. to say that the seriousness of Shovel Knight's loss is enforced primarily by this piece of music, and one thing that is integral to this is the sound of the added second in the tonic F-sharp minor chord. It's not uncommon to see minor chords with an added 7th and 9th used to create a specific color. The flat 7th softens the sound of the minor chord while the 9th just adds a layer of complexity to it. So ditching the 7th and just adding the 9th, or in that case the 2nd, adds this layer of complexity to the sound without sacrificing the dark quality. These minor add 2 chords demand that you take them seriously. Just listen to a comparison. Adding to this effect is the way Kaufman frequently places these seconds right next to the minor third of the chord, injecting the chord with this half-step dissonance. And he does this every single time we resolve to the one. Just listen. Using these dissonances on our one chord, which is our harmonic place of rest, reinforces a sense of hopelessness. Shovel Knight can't escape the pain of loss, it's just something he has to put up with as he carries on his quest. In stark contrast to this deliberate use of added chord tones, the rest of the harmony uses as many chord extensions as possible to create this thick wall of sound. Each non-tonic chord uses basically every diatonic extension available in the inner voices, and the melody highlights upper chord extensions more often than not. What's interesting is that when the melody emphasizes a more stable note, the inner voices move to an upper extension, and when the inner voices resolve to a more stable note, the melody emphasizes an upper extension. This ensures that every beat sounds colorful while allowing each voice to move in its own melodically satisfying way. The entire progression looks like this. The first half is pretty typical of modern music's tendency to trade traditionally strong resolutions for a root movement that outlines a triad, although the 4 to 1 is still a pretty standard resolution. The second half of the progression basically trades in each chord for a related chord in the same category. B minor is D major's relative minor, G sharp half diminished and B minor are both predominant function chords, plus you get to maintain the bass motion going down a minor third, and the A is F sharp minor's relative major. It's a pretty simple construction, benefiting from the colorful use of extensions and great voicings, but it really only exists in service of the melody. And this melody would sound great no matter what the accompaniment was. First of all, the interval structure is incredibly dramatic. 
we get this motif of a big octave leap that resolves down a step. This entire melody is based off of this little three note motif, which is just great music writing. The motif is altered first by shrinking the leap down to a seventh, and then this variation descends down the scale while quickening the rhythmic pace. At the end we get this 1 flat 7 1 5 line, which stretches the motif further by switching where the small leap and the big leap take place. Ending on the 5 propels the music forward, refusing to give us a sense of total finality even though we have resolved to the tonic at this point. If I had one complaint, it's that the melody is too short. I could sit here and listen to this theme develop for hours. Luckily, Kaufman uses this theme a few times throughout the soundtrack to represent Shield Knight and her effect on the narrative. It's first introduced in the intro, when the two adventurers enter the Tower of Fate and Shield Knight is taken by the amulet. This immediately links the melody to the tragedy of Shield Knight's loss, even though it only appears for a short time. In this iteration, the melody is altered to fit over two dominant flat 5 chords a whole step away from each other, which gives it a surreal, dreamlike quality. The whole tone scale, from which this section is built from, is kind of associated with dream sequences. Like, You are getting very sleepy. No, wait, no, wait, no, wait, don't fall asleep, this is super exciting. Notice how the original melody's structure is altered to fit over the D flat 9 flat 5. Clearly the harmony was most important for setting the mood in this piece. We also hear it in the Starlit Wilds, which plays when Shovel Knight is resting at his campfire between levels. This version transposes the theme to a major key, creating a more hopeful atmosphere as Shovel Knight gets one step closer to saving his lost love. The fact that this is the victory music for completing a level could also represent Shovel Knight's complete fixation on his goal of saving Shield Knight. Just as losing her was his defining tragic moment, any real sense of achievement can only be gained by advancing on his quest to get her back. Even though this piece is in F sharp major, Kaufman borrows the flat 6 and minor 4 chords from the parallel minor key so that the melody can remain untouched. One melodic difference is the way the final C-sharp at the end of the phrase does a little trill with the B below it. Also, look at how the tonic F-sharp chord is harmonized with the flat 6 in the inner voices. This is a supremely weird move, but it gives the piece a really cool flavor. Even the tonic is imbued with this slight dark edge, just like how for all of his victories, Shovel Knight is still incomplete without his old partner. Before we move along, I'd also like to point out the sweet G over C sharp that takes us back to the top, combining the 4-1 movement from G to D with the leading tone resolution of C sharp to D. This sort of slash chord resolution just reeks of jazz nerd. Finally, this theme makes an appearance for the very last boss fight of the game. It's interesting to note that the music for the fight against the Enchantress only showcases this theme in one small quote, maybe to emphasize that Shield Knight isn't actually in control of herself at this point. But the Shield Knight theme plays a huge role in the music for the final boss fight against the Amulet Demon. Since this is the point where Shield Knight teams back up with you, this piece actually sounds a lot less tragic than previous iterations. Really, the only words I can use to accurately describe it is kick ass. At first we get this barrage of notes outlining a 1 sus, flat 2 sus, flat 3 sus, 4 sus. The flat 2 gives it the bite it needs to make this boss feel threatening, and the accompaniment contributes to this feeling by overwhelming us with a tidal wave of notes. When the melody comes in, we're treated to the most upbeat version of the Shield Knight theme in the game, 
partially due to the sheer speed of the music, but also due to the change in harmony. Where the Requiem for Shield Knight heavily used chord extensions and more subtle root movements to create a dreamlike lushness, this final boss theme, called The Betrayer, uses a repeating 1 to major 4 vamp. This major 4 chord is technically mode mixture as it contains the natural 6th scale degree as opposed to the minor key's typical flat 6th. Having the natural 6th scale degree in a minor key can bring a sense of mystery or, or, or playfulness or a sense of cool, depending on how you use it. Using the flat 6th in a minor key brings a more general sense of sadness or, or tragedy. This is embodied in the two modes that these scale degrees imply. The Dorian mode uses the natural 6, whereas the otherwise identical Aeolian mode, or natural minor scale, uses the flat 6. Notice how that little trill motif from Starlight Wilds gets turned into this kick-ass, chromatically rising fifth part. Next, Coffin brings an even more mode mixture by borrowing the flat 2 scale degree from the Phrygian mode to harmonize the melody with a flat 2 major 7 to flat 7 minor 7 progression. The flat 2 to 1 in minor isn't super common, but it's not a new technique by any stretch. But the way he extends the flat 2 with the use of its minor chord is something that I don't think I've really seen before. Notice how the melody flattens the second to fit these chords. Clearly, this harmonic move is really important for Coffin. The song uses the theme as a jumping off point to dive into these flying 16th note lines that make the whole boss fight extremely exciting. Before we go, I just want to talk about one of my favorite parts of this song, and probably of the whole soundtrack. After this variation on the melody, we go into this polyrhythmic section, accenting the dotted 8th note over 2 bars of 3-4 that bring us to this quick 2-bar melody before another 3-4 section and lightning fast scale take us back to the intro riff. What I find so cool about this passage, besides the awesome rhythmic stuff going on, is the harmony. We have our established chord progression right up to the flat 2, flat minor 7, but instead of going back to our 1, 4 vamp after this, the progression moves to a 2, minor 4, 1 in the key of E. This is one of my favorite progressions, and it retroactively causes the preceding flat 2 to flat 7 to double as a 1, 6 in the new key. A 1-6-2 minor 4 progression is very strong in establishing a key or tonal center, so when we arrive at another E major 7 chord, it really feels like a resolution. We quickly get tossed back to our original key as our new one acts as a flat 2 to give us a familiar but still pretty weird flat 2, 1, flat 6, 4. All these harmonic twists and turns make the song like a sort of musical roller coaster. It's like this big larger than life thing that keeps growing and pumping you up until you manage to beat the last boss and the whole tower basically explodes! And at the end, when the credits finish rolling and we see Shield Knight drag herself over to lay next to Shovel Knight by the fire, I know that this will be a moment in gaming that I remember for the rest of my life. And I know that this wouldn't be possible without the music. Well, that's the show. Thanks for watching! Jake Kaufman is a phenomenal composer, and the Shovel Knight soundtrack, as well as his other work, is available for download for free from his Bandcamp. I'll leave a link in the description. If you'd like to see more videos like this, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, and thanks again for watching.